There's a line that once you cross it, you've officially gone too far, and you'd be surprised by how many MCU heroes have done this. Have I? Like, sure, we expect the villains to always go too far, but what happens when Sylvie breaks the multiverse by eliminating He Who Remains? Or Tony Stark lets his emotions get the better of him to beat the crap out of Bucky? Today, I'm talking about all the game-changing moments where MCU characters went way too far. I think everyone has a different definition of too far, so I'm actually curious how you'll view the events and characters on this list. Paying my respects. I mean, only one way to find out, right? Let's get started. How do we feel about No Way Home now that more time has passed and we're all coming down from our collective euphoria about seeing all three Spider-Man on screen together talking about their web shooting abilities? Yeah. Big John. Is it still top 10 MCU? Top five? Top three? Nothing. I think everyone will be different, but although I think it's one of the best MCU movies and I enjoy Holland's character's journey, he is clearly one of the best recent examples of going too far. Yes, the circumstances around his life are getting hectic, with J. Jonah Jameson whipping the public into a frenzy and making a lot of people not like him, but his first solution to go to Doctor Strange and ask for a spell to make everyone forget who he is just seems extreme given how that overall unfolds. He only decides to do it once he sees how much his friends lives are affected by them not getting into MIT. And yes, his intentions are noble, but two moments prove that Peter went too far with it. The first is, as Doctor Strange tells him, he didn't go to the MIT board and try to plead his case. He got the rejection letter, and two seconds later he was at Doctor Strange's door asking for everything to be fixed. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Come on, Peter, you're an Avenger who helped save half the universe. Use some of that clout. Maybe call Pepper Potts, who knows who you are, and was married to the biggest MIT alumni ever, and I'm sure she could help things out. You know that I would help you with anything. And then the second moment is when MJ calls him out for not including her and Ned in the decision-making process. She says they could have figured out something together, and I don't doubt they would have brainstormed a better solution. So yeah, in Peter's impulsiveness and desperation, he made a decision that changed things forever, and it was truly him going too far. Yelena is one of the best new additions to the MCU. She is hilariously confident and delightful to watch interact with other heroes, especially her new BFF, Kate Bishop. What was that? I don't know. But her journey so far has been driven by the fact that she wants revenge on Clint Barton. We see at the end of Black Widow that she's manipulated into thinking Clint was overall responsible for Natasha's demise and she vows vengeance. But it's tough because the audience obviously knows what really happened and knows that Yelena is taking things too far by pursuing her vendetta. In the Hawkeye show, she doesn't listen to Kate Bishop and keeps interrupting Hawkeye when he's clearly dealing with a bunch of mobsters. And the reason that I think this is going too far is because Yelena isn't thinking things through. Does she really believe that Clint would take out his very best friend in the whole wide world? After everything Natasha told Yelena about Clint, does Yelena really think that Natasha would want him taken out? I don't think so. It would have been very different if Yelena's motivations weren't misguided. If Yelena knew from the start the circumstances about what happened and wanted to get rid of Clint because she didn't think Clint deserved to live after all the bad things he's done while Natasha was such a hero, then that would have been a bit more understandable. And there's a part of her that may have thought that, but the show didn't do the best job in explaining that. So I count this as Yelena taking her vendetta too far. WandaVision kicked off Phase 4, and it sort of feels like a million years ago at this point, doesn't it? Thanks to Disney Plus's constant stream of new MCU shows, it might be easy to forget about the very first one, but WandaVision was a lot of fun. It played with its formats and positioned its protagonist Wanda as one of the new main players of the MCU. But if you examine her actions throughout the show, it's easy to say that Wanda took things too far. Yes, at the very beginning, you could say she was mostly blameless. She didn't mean to make the hex, but rather her grief over losing Vision and finding the house he was going to build for them just caused a massive surge of power that created the Hex and enslaved the town of Westview. I don't necessarily fault her for that because she was dealing with unimaginable loss, but I do say she went too far once she realized what was going on and then didn't try to change it. She wanted to hold on to that life with Vision and her children no matter the cost, even if that meant entrancing people against their will. This is our home. That's too far, Wanda. The Loki show really did have a great arc for everyone's favorite god of mischief. I beg your pardon. 
He went from craving power above all else to realizing that maybe there were more important things in life than disrupting the balance of everything and seizing control. Unfortunately, he was paired up with a variant of himself who wanted revenge for her hard life and wouldn't listen to reason. Sylvie ends up plunging a knife into He Who Remains His chest, causing the multiverse to basically fracture, and leading the way for Kang the Conqueror to invade and presumably jumpstart the new multiversal war. This is wild. Okay, the first villain on this list. I can forgive most villains for having a plan that includes universe domination or just straight up greed, but I think on the other end of the spectrum, you have Thanos, who truly believed he was the hero and savior of the universe with his plans to wipe out half of all life. Sure, Endgame revealed that deep down, Thanos was just the same type of villain as all those other universe-destroying threats, but Infinity War tried its hardest to show that Thanos thought he was right, and through his steely determination, he never really realized that he was taking things way too far. Out of all the examples on this list, I think this is the biggest moment that went too far, but then led to something good. We all know Black Widow had a troubled past. In her words, she had a lot of red in her ledger, and she lost part of herself doing the whole worldwide assassin thing. But I think one of her biggest defining moments is when she was asked to eliminate Drakoff. In order to find the elusive leader of the Red Room, Natasha made the decision to blow up Drakoff's daughter as collateral damage. It was a desperate move in order to escape the Red Room once and for all, but it was still a moment that defined Natasha's actions going forward. She dedicated her life to being a hero after that moment and wanted to make up for that. When making a list of MCU characters who went too far, I can't not include the alternate what-if version of Doctor Strange, who became so obsessed with rescuing Christine Palmer that he ended up destroying his entire universe. This version of Strange dedicated years of his life to trying to break an absolute point in time, and he embraced dark magic in order to do it. Although it was clearly a bad idea, after he started absorbing evil creatures from different dimensions, he kept at it until he was too powerful to be stopped. Then, of course, everything backfired when his universe collapsed. It's especially true that he went too far because, honestly, a much better solution was right in front of him. He could have just dedicated his life to traveling to a different universe where Christine was still alive. But no, he just kept up with the whole eating demons thing instead. Tony Stark is one of the best characters in the MCU because no matter how many bad decisions he made, we all still rooted for him. But out of all his questionable moments, I think the only time he truly went too far was when he freaked out and started fighting Bucky and Captain America. Yes, it was a very emotional time as he learned that Bucky assassinated his parents and Steve knew about it, but in that moment, Tony forgot all about being the hero, being a better man, having forgiveness or clear-headedness, all of it. He just wanted to beat up Steve and Bucky, leading to a brutal fight that fractured Cap and Iron Man's relationship almost past the point of no return. Again, Steve should have told Tony earlier, but Tony also should have kept his emotions in check and had a conversation instead of immediately attacking. Clint Barton is the poster child for going too far. After losing his family in the blip, he lost his tether to humanity and decided to start hunting down bad guys and eliminating them as the ruthless Ronin. One of the original Avengers, who was a role model to so many young wannabe archers, didn't do the heroic thing and instead just basically gave up. Thankfully, Natasha was around to throw herself off a cliff and give Clint a second chance. Hmm, that doesn't sound right. Although it's devastating that we lost Natasha that way, and it was a poor story choice to not have her honored like Tony Stark was honored, narratively it was a great ending as Clint was the one that saved Natasha and gave her a second chance all those years ago, so in Endgame, Natasha returned the favor. Both of them were able to help the other out when they went too far, and I think that's pretty cool. Killmonger is an all-time great MCU villain, and yes, you could argue him trying to incite war around the world to help oppressed individuals rise up is too far, but that overall fits with his character. That's not my name, princess. I think the smaller moment where he truly crosses the line is demanding that Wakanda burn all the heart-shaped herbs so that no one else could become the Black Panther. It's such a frightening and heartbreaking moment as Killmonger is blinded by his desire to be the one and only leader that he's willing to erase a huge part of Wakanda's past, present, and future in order to remain in power. Is this your game? He says he wants to bring Wakanda into the light and assert them as the superpower he knows they are, but is also willing to destroy a major source of strength out of fear of betrayal. I think that's going too far. You know who really went too far? Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker in No Way Home. 
His destructive self-talk, where he didn't find himself very amazing, crossed a serious line. So what if you've only fought a giant rhino man instead of aliens? That's okay, we all still love you. 